Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I'll be reviewing frequency tables for grouped data. By the end of this video, you'll be able to describe the rules for a grouped frequency table and apply this knowledge to complete a practice problem. Please feel free to pause the video at any time to take notes. Frequency tables are a part of descriptive statistics. We organize a large set of numbers to better describe and understand the data. Sometimes we have a data set that covers a wide range of values. For example, what if we had a student score a zero on a statistics exam? And we had another student score a hundred. In that case, a regular frequency table of the exam scores would be ridiculously large because it'd have too many rows. For this example, the regular frequency table would have a hundred rows to capture all the values from zero to 100. Instead, we would use a group frequency table to have a more manageable sized frequency table. In creating a group frequency table, there are four rules to follow. First, a grouped frequency table should have about 10 intervals. Interval is just a fancy word for groups. Get it? A grouped frequency table? So the table should have about 10 groups. Second, each interval or group should be a simple number, which is typically 2, 5, or 10. If we selected an interval of 2, then the group would only have two values in it, such as 0 to 1, because 0 and 1 are a total of two numbers. If we selected an interval of 5, then the group would only have five values in it, such as 0 to 4, because we have the values of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is a total of five numbers. Third, the start of each interval must be a multiple of the interval size that you choose in rule number two. For example, if you selected an interval size of two, then the start of each group would be 0, 2, 4, and so forth. If you selected an interval size of 5, then the start of each group would be 5, 10, 15, and so forth. Finally, all intervals or groups should be the same size. In other words, once you've selected an interval size of 2 for your table, you cannot change your mind and then switch to have an interval size of 5 for the rest of your table. There is one important formula for creating a grouped frequency table. Rows equals the highest score minus the lowest score plus one. In other words, you take the highest score in your data set, subtract from the lowest score, and add one. The blue star here is to remind you of this formula. This formula will give you an estimate of how many possible rows you should have in your frequency table. I would like to summarize the steps in creating a group frequency table. You will notice that the steps tend to correspond with the rules we discussed earlier. First, calculate the possible rows that you might have in your frequency table using the formula we just reviewed. Second, decide on the size of the interval. You will select either 2, 5, or 10, which refers to rule number 2. Third, decide on the interval for your table that includes the lowest score of the data set. This step refers back to rule number three. This first interval or group should be a multiple of the interval size that you selected in step two. Fourth, create all the intervals or groups you need based on the interval size that you selected that will take into account all the values in your data set. Now that we've reviewed the rules and steps to creating a group frequency table, are you ready to practice your new knowledge? I have one practice example for you to review. The lecture example is asking us to practice descriptive statistics. We need to create a frequency table that organizes and summarizes the ages in a statistics course. The ages vary from 18 to 55. 
do we want to create a fre frequency table with rows from 18 to 55? The answer is probably not. So let's get started. Step one is to calculate rows using the formula we discussed earlier. So 55 minus 18 plus one equals 38. In other words, a regular frequency table would have 38 rows. That's way too big. Clearly we need to make a grouped frequency table. Step two is to decide whether we will select an interval size of two, five, or 10. In order to do this, let's create a simple table to keep us organized. We have three interval sizes, and we need to know the number of intervals needed to cover a range of 38 points or 38 rows. We will simply divide the number of possible rows by the interval size to determine how many possible intervals or groups the table could have. So let's start with the first one. 38 divided by an interval size of two gives us 19 intervals or 19 groups, which according to rule number one is too many. 38 divided by an interval size of five gives us eight intervals, which meets rule number one. Just in case, let's check our last option. 38 divided by 10 gives us four intervals, which is too few of intervals. So we will select an interval size of five for creating this table. Step three is to decide on the first interval or group. Since ages range from 18 to 55, then 18 is our lowest score in the data set. Recall that rule number three states that interval must be a multiple of the interval size. So, we cannot start our interval at 18. We have to start at 15, which is a multiple of five. Step four is to create the intervals or groups for the frequency table. Recall that rule number four states that the interval should be all the same size. So if we start with 15 and have an interval size of five, then the first interval or group would be 15 to 19. This interval has the values of 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, which is a total of five numbers, or the size of the interval we selected. Now, let's review what the final group frequency table would look like. The intervals or groups are listed under age. There needs to be enough intervals to cover the entire data set. Since ages varied from 18 to 25, the table needs to have an interval or group that includes 55. In this case, we need to add one more interval of 55 to 59 to include 55. If you count the total number of intervals or groups in this table, there are nine total intervals. This number is more than the eight we predicted in step two. This is totally fine. We always need to make sure that the data set is accurately represented, even if we need to add one more interval or group to the table to make it happen. In summary, frequency tables are a feature of descriptive statistics, where we need to organize and summarize the data. Learning how to create a grouped frequency table is one of the many Lego building blocks needed to understand statistics.